Yeah, let's go ahead and start. It's 2.37. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to start the hearing. My name is Thomas Reutman. I'm a hearing officer with San Francisco Public Works. Um, Clinton Otwell is the clerk for the hearing. These microphones are actually just recording. They're not amplifying, so if I try to speak into the microphone, it's not going to make it louder, so let me know if you can't hear me. Um, and then when we take testimony, we're going to bring a microphone over so that we can record your testimony as well. Actually, why don't we have people? You want to have yeah, people come have sit people here? Yeah, we can people sit here. So this hearing's being recorded, and there's a sign-in sheet. Uh, shortly. Coming shortly. Um, please be sure to sign in before you leave so we can contact you in the future if you have f questions that we're going to follow up with you on. This public hearing is being held to consider a single item, order number 201948, to accept testimony and public input on a director's order to approve the Better Market Street Project, California Environmental Quality Act, parenthetically CEQA findings, and mitigation monitoring and reporting program. My job as the hearing officer is to gather the facts for the hearing item, listen to your testimonies, and help our Director of Public Works make determinations. I will not be making any decisions today. Instead, I will forward the findings from this hearing and make my recommendations to the Director. The Director will make the final determinations. When the Director's determinations are made, the Department will notify you of them. So if you'd like to be notified, please sign in. The hearing will proceed as follows. I'll ask Public Works staff to speak first and give a brief presentation on the project and the status of the environmental clearance. Then I'll allow any property owners adjacent to the project to speak, and then any other members of the public or witness who would like to speak, and then the department again if they would like to address any of the comments, and lastly, the property owner or appellant if there are any rebuttals. Each speaker will have two and a half minutes to speak, and then we'll let you know there's 30 seconds left for a total of three minutes per person, and the clerk will monitor the time for the speakers. Uh, he'll let you know with a bell or a hand when <laughs> it's time to 30 seconds left, so please respect everyone's time in here. Comments and questions should be addressed to me and not to the department or the applicant. If you cannot finish your comments within the allotted time, you may submit written testimony to me by the end of this hearing. And if, if I feel that there's a question warranted, I'll ask the question. After all comments are completed, I will close the item. We'll now begin the hearing. Order number 201948. May I have Public Works please make the presentation? Sure. Good afternoon. My name is Christine Olea with San Francisco Public Works. I'm the project manager for Better Market Street. I just have a few slides that we'll go through to give an overview of the project. The project started back in 2010. And from the very beginning, we've always had three main goals. First, improving place, renewing and refreshing the streetscape along Market Street. Improving mobility, and under that is also key goal of safety. And then third is economic development throughout the corridor. We want a street that is designed to reduce the number of collisions, especially injury collisions. We want improved performance and reliability of our public transportation, an accessible sidewalk that identifies Market Street as the city's preeminent ceremonial street, and upgrading all of our infrastructure. As you know, there's a lot of growth in mid-market, and we want to match our investment in our infrastructure with all of the growth that's happening right now on Market Street. So the pictures on the bottom left is the Yotel, which just opened at 7th and Market, and Trinity, which is at 8th and Market. And the top picture is of the proposed plan for Civic Center Public Realm. A large part of the project is improving our infrastructure, our existing infrastructure. This includes all of the asphalt, the sidewalks, the curb ramps, our street lights, which are on the path of gold, the sewer and water lines, communication, all of the traffic signals need to be replaced, the track 
and the trackway itself need to be replaced, along with the overhead wires for Muni's trolleys and the traction power that, that supplies or that powers the, the trolleys. There's a lot of safety improvements that are needed as well. As you know, there's no bicycle, dedicated bicycle facility east of 8th Street. As I mentioned, our infrastructure is reaching the end of its useful life. Our transit stops and our curb ramps, the sidewalks, do not meet our current ADA standards. And we want to improve all of our transit um, reliability and reduce travel times along the corridor. A little bit more about the collisions that are happening on Market Street. Our data tells us that each year over the past five years, there's been an average of 100 injury collisions along the corridor between Stewart and Octavia. And of those collisions, 75% involve people that are walking or biking. In order to help guide the project, we've had an extensive community engagement. We've had five rounds of open houses or community workshops since 2011. We've had hundreds of stakeholder meetings and presentations in the public. We've had an active community working group, which Ron Miguel is our chair, and he's here today. We have, um, we've developed a, an app, which is on our website called Turn by Turn, which will show you um, the changes in your uh, commute or your travel with Better Market Street implemented. We have our project website that has a lot of information and is also our archive of a lot of our outreach. We've done surveys both um, at our community meetings as well as door to door to collect information about loading along the corridor. We've done mailings and posters. We've even done um, the prototyping festival, which I'm sure you remember from a few years ago. And we've done tabling as well as pop-ups at the Strand Theater. So all, with all this input that we've collected, this is the proposed project. In the roadway, we still leave two lanes in each direction for a total of four lanes. The center red lanes that we have today will be Muni only. That means there's no taxis in the center lane anymore. Paratransit, taxis, emerg well, emergency vehicles are allowed in any lane. Um, delivery vehicles and... Let's see, who did I leave off? Transit, paratransit, taxis, and delivery vehicles will be in the curb lane. Bicycles will be moved off of the roadway and put on a sidewalk-level bikeway. So you can see the bikeway on both sides of the street. In some cases, we'll have a transit boarding island between, we'll have a center boarding island between the two vehicle lanes. And in other locations, we'll have a curbside transit stop between the roadway and the sidewalk-level bikeway. Our typical width for the bike lane is eight feet, and then there's a four-foot buffer between the bikeway and the roadway. Our street life zone is key to the urban design of the project. Not only is it the area that will house all of our street furniture, including our street lights, the path of gold, and our trees, but it will also be where we have space to program or activate uh, Market Street and provide a, an active area um, for people as they walk along Market Street. It's where we'll put our seating. It's also where we'll have all of the deco toilets and kiosks and, and other infrastructure. The pedestrian walkway is typically 10 feet wide. And then there's a frontage zone next to the buildings that allows for tables and chairs. Here's a, a zoom in to the sidewalk. I'll start at the building line. Better Market Street is a complete reconstruction of Market Street from property line to property line. So here you see the frontage zone, the pedestrian walkway, followed by the furnishing zone. The buffer zone, the first buffer zone, will be our detectable separation. Um, we've selected a trapezoidal tile that will act as a separator between the furnishing zone and the bikeway. Our eight-foot bikeway and then the four-foot buffer. We'll also be replacing a lot of the trees that are unhealthy or structurally damaged along Market Street. The primary tree will be the platinus tree, which we have today. Um, the, it's the, the sycamore tree, the London plane tree. But to help create a thriving urban forest, we're also mixing in a few other trees, a cork tree, an elm tree, 
and a Brisbane box. Those trees will primarily be at the intersections where we have the, the darker green triangles. As I said, to introduce some variety and also to, to help um, maintain a thriving urban forest. An important part of our project is replacing the brick. The brick is difficult to travel along if you're in a wheelchair or any other mobility device, um, especially in the herringbone pattern. The joints are closely spaced and you feel that um, you feel the joints as you're traveling along Market Street. So the new design is to have larger pavers stacked in an aligned pattern along the sidewalk. The pedestrian walkway will be pavers that are 8 inches by 24 inches. That means that you, know, you won't encounter the joints any closer than every 2 feet. We have a, a very um, continuous streetscape design or urban design throughout the corridor. We've worked closely with BART on the canopies to make sure that they, they fold in nicely, as well as with J.C. Decoe. The photo on the bottom right is of one of the new toilets that J.C. Decoe will be installing. The look of a lot of the streetscape features is of a stainless steel finish, really wanting to highlight um, the importance of Market Street as our, our primary ceremonial street with this coordinated streetscape and a very um, sleek design. The bus shelters will be the same as today by Clear Channel, but we're proposing a roof that's either clear or transparent. And the bottom left shows a leaning rail for bicyclists along the bikeway where you could stop and, and lean on the, the rail. And we'd also like to include seating as part of our project. Over the years, all of the seating that was on Market Street has been removed, but we'd like to introduce new seating um, that is comfortable for people to hang out in and, and spend time in, but also does, discourages people from staying there too long. One of the key elements to our economic development is ensuring that we have space for loading and for deliveries, for the movement of goods. We, the loading zones will be similar to what we have today where they are loading bays that cut into the sidewalk. The difference is they will be at sidewalk level, which means they'll be six inches above the, the roadway. And you can see the bikes will ride along the outside of the parking bay or the loading zone and then come back on the other side. For delivery vehicles or paratransit, they will cross the bikeway to get into the loading zone. One of our strategies to reduce conflicts is that deliveries will not be allowed during peak hours in the peak direction. So inbound in the morning or on the south side of the street, you won't be able to deliver in the morning. And on the north side or outbound, you won't be able to deliver in the afternoons. In order to improve our transit travel time, we are proposing that the center boarding um, center stops are only at the BART and Muni stations. That's consistent with MTA's rapid stop spacing. This equals up to 25% reduction in travel time throughout the corridor. You can see that in the center lane we'll have the F line as well as the 9 and the 9R and the 5 and the 5R. The other lines along Market Street will run in the curb lane and we'll have stops similar to local stops local stop spacing. There's one area of Market Street where we're proposing new F-line track, and that's known as our F-loop along McAllister and Charles J. Brenham. That's around the proper hotel. The highest ridership on the F-line is between Fisherman's Wharf and Powell, and so we were looking for a place where we could turn the streetcar around close to Powell Street. And the closest and sort of the shortest distance to do that was along McAllister and Charles J. Brenham. This enables us to have short turns for additional service where we need it the most while maintaining service to the Castro. So we're not reducing service all the way to Castro, but we're providing for a short loop, which means headways of about five minutes, every five minutes between Fisherman's Wharf and Powell. A key strategy to reduce, collision and, to reduce collisions and improve safety is to restrict private vehicles from using Market Street. This is a diagram that shows the
the car-free area. Westbound, it's from Stewart to Franklin. And eastbound, it starts at 12th Street and continues until Drum. There are two block faces where we're allowing cars to circulate. Um, that's from 11th to 10th Street on the south side. And then also from Drum to Stewart, you'll also be allowed to drive on the south side of Market Street. Again, that's to preserve circulation and provide local access around the block. There's a few um, additional turn restrictions I wanted to highlight. One is from Market Street eastbound onto southbound Valencia. That's also an intersection where we have a lot of collisions between turning traffic and bicycles continuing straight on market. So that right turn is, is um, prohibited. At Market and Van Ness, there will be no right turns allowed. And then there are a couple of locations where we are um, converting the direction of travel. So if you, if you can see the blue arrows, the first is on Jones between McAllister and Golden Gate. That's one way southbound today, and the proposal is to change it to two way. And along Ellis Street, it's currently two way between Cyril Magnin and Market, and the proposal is to convert it to one way westbound, away from Union Square. And Spear is proposed to be two-way um, between Mission and Market. The parking and traffic changes are not really part of today's hearing. They will be heard by the MTA board next Tuesday, October 15th. And we'll, you know, the MTA board is the one who will review and approve the parking and traffic changes. There are additional improvements um, proposed near Market and Van Ness. This is part of the hub area plan and where we know we have thousands of residents moving in. And the uh, overwhelming request from community outreach as part of the hub area plan was to provide more space for people walking and biking near Market and Van Ness. So you can see we have much wider sidewalks. There's only one lane in each direction within the roadway. And that's the center Muni only lane. Well, it's actually transit only and uh, taxis will be allowed to use this area as well. Also, the center boarding island that's currently on the east side of, of um, Market Street will be moved to the west side. This allows us to have a better connection for bicycles from Market onto 11th Street. The key um, there's two reasons why we were able to make these changes approaching Van Ness. One is that transit volumes have really decreased by the time we get to Hayes Street. The 21 Hayes turns off there, and then we're left with the F line, the 6, the 7, and the 9. The 9 turns off at 11th, and the 6 and 7 continue to Haight Street. So we, can, we know that we have enough capacity in those two lanes for those transit routes. It also means that... Um, Delivery vehicles will be turned off of Market Street at Hayes Street. So there will be no commercial vehicles between Hayes to Franklin on the north side and 12th to 11th on the south side. Quickly, the project schedule. We received our CEQA um, certification yesterday at the Planning Commission. We're now moving into project approval, so this is the first hearing for project approval. MTA board next Tuesday. There's a 30-day appeal period. That's an appeal to the environmental impact report. If there's a, an appeal that's filed with the clerk of the board, there will be a hearing scheduled at the Board of Supervisors um, within 45 days. So that takes us to about January. Our plan is to then start the quick build implementation in early 2020, starting as early as January. We also have a pilot project on Market Street between Franklin and Goff. We had an earlier pilot project in 2015 and 2016 where we have a 2-inch and a 4-inch gray cycle track. We'll be converting that to a sidewalk-level bikeway and piloting our design for Market Street, but for better Market Street. The first phase of construction is between 5th and 8th Streets. The schedule is to advertise the construction contract in 2020 and to break ground in either the end of 2020 or early 2021. We expect that construction will take two years, so it could last until 2023. 
followed by the F loop, which is likely to happen between 2023 and 2025. This is just a, a list of all of our uh, environmental review and project approvals. We started environmental review in 2015. As I mentioned, the EIR was certified yesterday. Our two hearings, Public Works and MTA Board. And then because we have federal funding, we're also getting federal environmental clearance. And we expect to have that in early 2020. A little bit more on the quick build. There are three main components to the quick build implementation. First, implementing the car-free zone east of 10th Street, <coughs> and also implementing 100 new loading zones on cross streets. That's both passenger loading and commercial loading zones. The Muni only lane will be extended to Main Street. First off, it'll be converted to Muni only and then extended to Main where we have the highest number of transit uh, vehicles driving along Market Street. And then the third component are the painted safety zones or um, temporary sidewalk extensions, where we have additional roadway space that's created by restricting the turns. Those will happen at eight intersections. This is a diagram of the turn restrictions. As I mentioned, westbound from Stewart to Van Ness and eastbound from 10th to Drum. There's additional turn restrictions at Page and Franklin. Um, the small area between Franklin and Market will become bike only. And so what will be left is, um, so you won't be able to make a right turn from Market onto Franklin or Page. And there's no right turn from northbound South Van Us to eastbound Market. This is a picture of the pilot project area. I mentioned it's between, Frank, between Goff and Franklin um, on the south side of Market Street. We'll be installing an asphalt bikeway where we have the bikeway today, just raising it up six inches. We'll also be installing a detectable separation material between the bikeway and the pedestrian area and installing um, our new pavers in the sidewalk and reusing or installing granite curb. One of the things we've heard quite a bit from people as we've gone out to the community is to minimize impacts as much as possible to businesses. So we're developing a very um, extensive construction mitigation plan that includes all of these um, services, marketing campaign, signage, um, ambassadors to help people um, get around Market Street, incentives to our contractors to try to get them to work um, to finish work ahead of time. We'll have a project office with um, public hours, and that will be like a one-stop shop for people to apply for, for any of these services. And then also providing a clear transit service plan so that people will know where to get their, their bus. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Can I get a show of hands how many people are property owners adjacent to the project site? Okay, thank you. Um, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go in order from this end of the room to here um, with taking testimony. So um, anyone that would like to give testimony, please come up and state your name and then provide your testimony. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Rohan. Uh, I moved to the city uh, just last year and uh, I wanted, uh, I'm a freaking biker in the city and I use Market Street often to uh, get where I need to go. And uh, my experience over my time biking here is that uh, Market Street doesn't feel very safe right now. And I feel like these changes have been proposed with a better Market Street project uh, will, uh, will greatly increase the uh, the, the feeling of safety I, I would have on Market Street because I often uh, find myself in conflict with uh, other, other private vehicles who are trying to turn right or turn left or trying to go straight or there's, uh, they often will speed and 
I just it just feels very unsafe right now, and and so having that peace of mind where I don't have to worry about a stray car that comes too fast or I can't see it when I'm going straight, it's it would be it would be uh, very helpful. Um, yeah, I mean, just for my just my peace of mind, and so I really approve of pr pretty much all of the changes that have been proposed here, and I just wanted to voice my support for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any testimony? Please come up and give your name and your testimony. Um, hello, good afternoon. Uh, so my name is uh, Darren Newell. Uh, I'm a campaign coordinator on staff at the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition. Um, and I'm here to help speak on behalf of our 10,000 plus members uh, to express our support for the project. Um, we're really excited to see it going forward and hopefully implemented uh, as soon as possible. Um, and so we really want to see this uh, environmental impact report uh, certified. Uh, I personally have experiences riding on Market Street nearly every day. Uh, constantly am conflicting between uh, buses and cars, um, particularly private vehicles, um, and also, you know, working with pedestrians as well, trying to navigate down the street. Um, you feel sandwiched. Um, it's a very tight street, especially beyond 8th, uh, heading toward inbound. And uh, I can definitely see that because the sort of streetway doesn't have space for every person's mode of transit, uh, it creates chaos, uh, for lack of a better word. And uh, so definitely taking the cars off Market Street as soon as possible, I see is a number one priority, um, the private vehicles in particular, I should say. Uh, I've been out actually getting public support for the project, handing out flyers to let people know about uh, this project is in existence and going forward. And when I tell people about the private auto restrictions as being one of the mainstays of the, of the whole uh, Better Market Street plan, uh, the only response that I'm getting from pedestrians and cyclists and transit riders is, you know, it's it's about time. <laughs> it's, um, so, like I said, we're really looking forward to this. I think the public is really looking forward to this, um, particularly with also the increasing density. Uh, it's an urgent matter. So, uh, just wanted to make sure we strongly expressed our support for this. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Teresa Tenfelder. I live in the Mission District, and I started. I'm just here to briefly voice support of the Better Market Street project. Um, I started biking on a bike to work day, I think about four years ago. And I remember thinking uh, that I was actually pretty safe uh, biking down Market Street. And you know, I started uh, around Valencia and Market, I think, and then continued. But then that's where uh, you lose the protected bike lanes and you end up sharing the road with cars, which is very difficult. Um, and you know, I just share a lot of the concerns that were called out in the presentation that are trying to be mitigated with this project. And uh, <laughs> would just like to, um, yeah, voice my support for giving um, sort of every mode of transit sort of their own lane uh, to reduce conflict and just for the street space. It sounds like it's going to be really great. So thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Ron Miguel. Uh, I chair, as was mentioned in the introduction, the Citizens Working Group for Market Street uh, on this particular plan. It consists of a group of uh, 24 or so representatives of stakeholders, everything from the Bicycle Coalition to Walk San Francisco uh, to the uh, Mayor's Disability Council, uh, you, you name it. They're sitting at the table, um, property owners association, um, everyone is there and is able to have the input in it. Uh, this has been a long time company coming. I chaired 
my first Market Street Committee back in starting March of 2011. Although for San Francisco, nine and a half years ain't bad. It was good to see the EIR certified yesterday. Um, it's the first big point in moving forward. Uh, hopefully we'll get a shovel in the ground sometime by the end of next year or the beginning of the following. Um, some of you may have seen a movie that has been on public television of Market Street in the early 1900s and you see everything from horses uh, to carriages to pedestrians, a few bicyclists, uh, and every other form of transit with no lanes whatsoever. Uh, and everyone mixed up totally uh, building wall to wall. Uh, so this is just another, to me, another stage in bringing things together in a system that uh, it's about time it's happened. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Hi, my name is Amber Hasselbring, representing Nature in the City and our volunteers, members, and constituents. Um, First of all, I want to congratulate the city on such a robust plan. You have taken into consideration so many features and factors. It's uh, really impressive. So I'll just re uh, read from what I wrote yesterday for the hearing. In the 1960s and 70s, Market, Market Street underwent major development and London plane trees were planted. At that time, no one would have guessed that the street would be transformed into ideal habitat for western tiger swallowtail butterflies. However, that is exactly what happened. In July 1984, during the first annual San Francisco butterfly count, lepidopterist Harriet Reinhard noted in high-rise downtown area, P. rutilus, western tiger swallowtail, is the main species seen since the entire length of Market Street has been planted with sycamores. We are overjoyed that in part because of our advocacy, plans for the newly improved Market Street will include a majority of newly planted London plane trees and also oaks and elms, which enhance habitat for countless insects and birds. In addition, the plan includes adding nectar flowers, and nectar is what's missing for these butterflies, insects, and pollinators that coexist amongst our day to day. The plan includes areas for planters wherever they can be maintained and supported, and we urge the city to require that these planters contain San Francisco native plants and swallowtail nectar sources whenever possible. These imperative placemaking elements not only enhance biodiversity, but also improve quality of life for residents, commuters, and visitors alike. Here at Nature in the City, we are committed to continue our advocacy and fundraising efforts so that the new Market Street includes wildlife. We are happy to set up meetings with anyone wanting to learn more about this natural phenomenon. And in closing, we urge the city to resist cost-cutting measures such as eliminating trees and planters that support wildlife. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Penrod, and I'm here to represent nature in the city today as well. And now that Amber has shared with you a bit of the amazing story about the phenomenon of the Western tiger, swell, tiger swallowtail butterflies making one of San Francisco's busiest streets their home, I would like to follow up by sharing one of our longtime strategic goals um, for the Tigers on Market Street project. Nature in the City is seeking to form a partnership with the city, BART, and corporate sponsors to bring to life the vision of living roofs on the new canopies being built over the transit entrances on Market Street. The canopies have been designed to support a living roof already, and as many of you may know, the first two pilot canopies have already been built at the Powell Street and Civic Center stations. 
we're proposing using these first two canopies as a pilot for the partnership and based on its success we would extend the partnership to encompass the additional 22 canopies that are being built or that will be built if you can envision for a moment these living roofs on these canopies would provide islands of habitat running along the length of the Better Market Street project. We believe that by piloting these living roofs, we can demonstrate and validate the benefits of a greener market street while utilizing a space that will be above street level construction as the Better Market Street project moves forward. At 15 feet above street level, these roofs are also safely away from the impact of pedestrians and traffic. As shown in the Living Roofs Benefit Report commissioned by SF Planning in 2016, by protecting the roof membrane, a living roof extends the life of a roof two to three times beyond its typical lifespan. In addition to these benefits and those to the western tiger swallowtail butterflies and other wildlife that make Market Street their home, living roofs would also benefit the hundreds of office workers and residents viewing Market Street from their windows on a daily basis. In closing, we ask for assistance finding city le leadership to champion our partnership to bring to life the vision of living roofs on these new canopies, and we recommend moving forward with the Better Market Street project. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, would you like to give testimony? Is there anyone else here um, that came in later so that needs to or would like to give testimony on the project? Yeah, I'm going to ask everyone um, if you get a chance to sign in. I think we did we circulate that sheet? Yeah, so as long, if you haven't signed in already before you leave, please sign in so that we can keep you informed of the decision or if there's any feedback required. If there's no more comments for this item, I'll now close the item and make my recommendations to the director. Closing this hearing, the hearing is now closed. Thank you.